Hey you! If you're enjoying Skyline Rem and want to help make it happen, you can apply to join our backstage team in the description of this video. If you don't have the time or means, don't sweat it. Subscribe, leave a like, and enjoy the video instead. Alright, that's enough for me. You emptied out my pockets hours ago. Good night, Cass. I was helping you out. Can't get robbed out there if you don't have any coins to steal. <laughs> Luck safe, Kylan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A kid? You're gonna regret throwing me, you hear? Empty your pockets unless you want to get burned. Huh? You sit on your bed, flipping further into your Thalmanomicon. Your feet are up on the mattress while you scan the pages. Ella sits at her desk like usual, going through various pouches and pouches of money, which she has organized into various piles before her. She takes care to count every coin, noting down the amount to the quill on a piece of paper. You frown at some of the unfamiliar vocabulary and diagrams before groaning and setting the book aside. Man, I'm not getting anything in these notes, you complain. I thought you were taking magic classes, she murmurs, not entirely paying attention to your plight. Okay, I am, but Penelope says I have to understand the basics before I can go any further in my studies. Tch, that's exactly why those lessons are a waste of your time, Alice states. How are you supposed to learn if you don't take risks and try a thing or two that's out of your comfort zone? She glances back at you, motioning to herself. You think I had to suffer through a bunch of dumb magic lessons to be as cool as I am now? I don't know. The answer is no, idiot, she frowns, looking back down at the coins to begin recounting. Just do whatever you want to do, Rex. You're a kind of smart guy. I'm sure you can figure it out for yourself. You think so? Your heart melts a bit at the sentiment. She notices your gaze and immediately backpedals. On second thought, maybe go back to bothering your magic teacher about this stuff. And quit looking at me like that! <laughs> Whatever you say, Alice. You smile to yourself, picking your book up again to flip back to your original page. You begin to reread the notes and the footnotes for any identical information. However, your attention's eventually stolen by Alice again as she begins to talk to herself. No way that's right, she states, looking back over the coins. Her eyes widen in excitement as she recounts for a third time. That's thirty, fifty, and then if we add that, she smooths her hair back. Oh my god! Wait, what's up? She looks back at you in excitement. We made it! 
we what made enough money to contact Ren? She announces, gathering up the coins and b bringing the bounty over to you. Look, the guy I talked to asked this much copper in exchange for delivering the letter. She motions to a piece of parchment, which contains all of Alice's quick notes and math. And the reward you brought back from the castle the other day ended up making us this much here. If you convert the silver to copper, we'll just barely pass the mark. Wait, so that means we're getting that kind of heroin! She beams. Took you long enough. Nice job, idiot. Thanks to you, we can finally get back to Ren and the rest of the crew. She messes up your hair in a strangely endearing manner. However, when she realizes what she did, she withdraws her hand and just crosses her arms. Eh, of course, I'll have to wait for them to actually get here from wherever they are. But making enough money to keep paying rent until then should be a piece of cake. Wow. She pauses, looking back at you. That's all you have to say? Come on, Rex, give me a little more than that. We're finally leaving the city, isn't that great? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's pretty cool. I just... I don't know. Consider all that you've done in Arrowin since you arrived. The idea of leaving seems almost bittersweet now. Of course, you're excited to meet back up with Ren and her crew. You've missed all the different friends you made on board, even if you didn't spend a great deal of time with them. So why does it feel so... Alice interrupts your thoughts. Look, I get that you're hesitant, but this is better for us, she states. We don't belong in Arrowin, remember? We're part of Ren's crew. Focus on what's really important here. Once we get back on the ship, things can finally go back to normal. I guess you're right. Now get up! She pulls you to your feet. We better get down to the docks. I don't want that guy I found to end up leaving Erwin before we get a chance to pay him. Wait, what about the letter to Ren? Did, did you write anything for that? You ask. Rex, I've been waiting to send this letter for weeks. Of course it's already written, she states. She digs around in her pocket, withdrawing a sealed envelope. You're really prepared for this, aren't you? You have no idea. <sighs> now follow me. If we're lucky, the guy we're looking for won't be too far from his ship. Keep your eyes peeled. He'll look like your average fisherman with a huge beard. Fisherman with a huge beard. Got it. All right, lead the way. Holy crap. I never knew how long it would take. It seemed like it would be like an insurmountable amount of money before we'd be able to get this far. But here we are. We did it. All it took was like stumbling through a few ruins, fighting some monsters, doing a bunch of really boring jobs sometimes, like organizing stock in a in a warehouse. But we made it! We did it! Man, this is what it feels like to actually accomplish a goal. It feels awesome. <sighs> the grind. It was worth it. We're almost down to the docks. Just gotta poke on down here, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right! Now that's- that's the one! I need my bucket back. It's still just down there. I had to leave it behind. I never went a single day without forgetting my bucket. Oh, is this the guy? You and Alice approach the older man by the boat confidently. Alice tightly grips the coins in her fists, lifting her head up to gaze down her nose at the man. Hey, Amos. The man glances back at the two of you. Is this the guy, Alice? No, I just happen to know his name for no reason. She flicks your forehead. What do you think, idiot? <laughs> well, I'll be, the man scoffs. Can't say I expected to see you again. When I told you my rates, I thought that was going to be the last of you. Yeah, well, we got the coin you wanted, so sorry to disappoint. Color me impressed, the man comments, stroking his beard. Who knew you'd manage to pull that off? He starts to reach out toward the pouch in Alice's grip, but she jerks her hand away from him. Ah, ah, ah. Not so fast, she frowns. I know how this song and dance goes. We give you the coin, and you run away without any assurance that you'll fulfill your end of the bargain. Yeah, that's right! You can't scam us! Maybe I'll just let me do the talking, Rex. Alice mutters to you. Tch. The man scowls. 
I'll have you know that I'm a man of my word, Amos defends himself. If you've seriously gotten my coin, then I'll deliver your letter. He crosses his arms. Like I said before, the location you gave me was fairly out of the way of my normal trade routes. But with your compensation, I shouldn't lose too many resources from this delivery. That's what I like to hear. Alice nods. She passes Amos a pouch of coins and the letter she drafted to Ren. You can count up the coins yourself. Should be the exact amount you were asking for. Down to the copper. <laughs> the man opens the pouch, peeking inside the various coins. Looks like everything's in order. All right, then. He holds out his hand to Ellis, who accepts and shakes it. Pleasure doing business with you, Ellis smirks. <laughs> Let's go! Ren and crew, here we come! Amos steps away to count up his bounty, while Ellis looks back at you, letting out a relieved sigh. <sighs> Finally! That's one thing we don't have to worry about anymore. I can't wait to get out of this city. And that letter's out for delivery. What should we do? Keep surviving, I guess. Ellis shrugs. Ren probably won't get that letter for a while. We've just got to be patient and have faith that when she does receive it, she'll head straight over here. Ellis glances around the area. In the meantime, why don't we grab a bite to eat or something? Didn't you say that Seafood Place and the Farm Marketplace had good stuff? Ooh! Yeah, yeah, yeah! You're gonna love it. Seriously. Lead the way, then. <laughs> it's because of your last paycheck that we could deliver that letter in the first place. That's deserving of a little celebration. Hey, we've both worked super hard for this. Don't sweat it. Let's go. You! Oh, shoot. Rex, we gotta run. What? Run! Ah! Ellis! Why are we running? You won't get away this time. Guards after her! Ellis, what is happening? Remember that problem I have with authority? She's my problem! All right, looks like it's time to bust our way out. What? I'm not looking to go to jail, Ellis! Yeah, well, I am! <laughs> you have the right to remain silent, Ellis. What should we do with this one, Admiral? Don't arrest him. His only crime here is being stupid. We caught who we were after. Ellis grimaces as she's pulled to her feet, trying to fight the guards off of her. Ah, crap, she mutters. You gotta be kidding me! You have the right to remain silent, the Admiral says. Anything you can't say can and will be used against you before the Grand Judge of Erwin. What's going on here? I didn't do anything, Alice argues. I've been an upsetting citizen. This is unfair imprisonment. I think your record would disagree, the Admiral states simply, clasping her hands behind her back after snapping to the nearby members of the Vanguard. You two, come with me. We're taking her into custody. Wait, no, Alice! As you try to run forward, the same guards from before hold you back as they look at the Admiral in confusion. Are you sure we should just let him go, Admiral? They ask. If he's an accomplice of hers, then he has nothing to do with this case. Let him go. Upon her command, the guards drop you, which causes you to stumble forward in shock. You glance up and meet Ellis's gaze. Her brow is furrowed in concern and slight... panic. Rex! She calls back to you as the guards escort her away. Ellis, what do I do? Get me a lawyer! Tell him this is a misunderstanding! She calls back to you. I'm innocent, man! Get off me! You watch as the guards and the Admiral drag Ellis, kicking and shouting, away from the scene. Oh, jeez, this isn't any good. 
Tell me about it, a voice mumbles from nearby. You glance in the direction of the voice quickly, and you find Lane standing a few feet away, his arms crossed and a grim look on his face. She didn't even hesitate. She must not be messing around. I mean, she didn't ask me to do anything this time. Lane! Oh, thank goodness! You gotta talk some sense in the Admiral! He glances in your direction. Lane considers the question, blinking slowly at you as though you were mad, before eventually he just shakes his head. No. What? Why not? You exclaim. She's not going to listen to me. He rubs his arm. So there's no point. It'd be a waste of energy. Fine! What can I do? Pray to unity. Besides that, Alice needs me! Can you give me something to work with? Mm -hmm. He hesitates. And talk to me, man! This is serious! You grab him by the shoulders. Uh. He instantly tenses up as you gaze into his eyes. He looks away. Um. Well, your friend will probably be held in the courtroom until her hearing. If you want to talk to her, you'll find her there. He rubs the back of his neck. Seems like she had more to say. Actually figuring out what she's being accused of is important information, if you want to get her a lawyer, too. Good point. Okay, I'll go to the courthouse then! You start to walk off before pausing in your tracks. Uh... Where's the courthouse? <sighs> In between the library and the bank. It'll be the large building with the domed roof on the right side of the canal. Awesome! You're the best lane! I owe you one! You shout back at him. As you rush off, you swear you notice him appear rather bashful. and surprise at your outburst. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Dang! What the heck? She just jumped Alice! Alice, what did you do? Oh. And how am I supposed to find a lawyer? I don't know people that are lawyers. Maybe I could talk to Arden? No, there's no way. I could have to run all the way across the city. I'd have to go through the, the, the castle. I'd have to ask for advice. Oh, that's too much time. I need to go to Alice now. Here we go. Uh, it said between that and the bank. The bank was over there. So it's this one. Is it this building? That's the library. It's gotta be this building. Knock, knock. Uh. uh hello? As you enter the lobby, your eyes fall upon a young woman sitting behind the desk. She seems tired and frazzled, with an unamused expression on her face. She scribbles on some parchments, stamping an official seal across each of the bases of the parchments before rolling them up and setting them to the right. Tch. Course can't file his own papers, can't stamp his own seals. Ugh. She mumbles to herself as she continues to work, a few hairs falling out of place from the messy braid down her back. Uh, hey, excuse me, I'm looking for- As soon as you open your mouth, you notice her jaw tighten. She turns to look at you, her cold gaze instantly sealing the words in your throat. Oh my god, help me. Uh, do you have an appointment, yes or no? Uh, 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 no? Did I call your number, yes or no? My, my, my number? You blink in confusion. I, I don't understand. I, I just got here. I'm trying to find- The Grand Judge is very busy at the moment, she interrupts you. I'm afraid he has no openings in his schedule for the next couple of days. If you have any further questions, please take one of our tickets and wait for your turn. She motions to a small glass bowl to her left. Within the bowl are a number of tickets, each one with a number on it. Okay, I'm not here for any of that. In that case, if you would please take one of our tickets, I can assist you with whatever you're here for once it is your turn. She asserts. Well, I don't have time for that! You counter her. This is the point, my friend! Her name's Alice! She just got arrested! Probably just arrived? Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to- Just throw me a bone here, lady! My friend's in trouble and I gotta help her out! The woman's face grows red and she snaps. Alright, fine, fine! I don't get paid enough for this as it is to deal with it! She massages her temples, trying to remain calm as she leans forward. 
If you're talking about the young woman with fiery orange hair, she was just brought in the courtroom to meet with the grand judge for her hearing. Already? What? She just got arrested like minutes ago! We run a tight ship in the Erwin courthouse, she states. Just go ahead and make your way inside. I don't even care right now. She waves you away. But the next time, you'd better abide by the ticket system, or I swear I will have security remove you faster than you can ask a follow-up question. Ha! <laughs> Got it! Uh, thanks, miss! Ha ha! Ha Alice! Whoa. This place is cool looking. What the hey? Why have I never been in here before? Wait, crap! I gotta go! Um, uh, um, Alice? <gasps> you rush up the stairs into the courtroom with conviction. However, your shoulders immediately sag at the sight before you. The courtroom is entirely empty, except for Alice and the Admiral, and the rest of the pews remain vacant. The Admiral taps her foot impatiently, staring at the bench before her and Alice. Where is he? For unity's sake, she mutters to herself. Well, looks like the jury's out. Does that mean I can go? Alice asks. Be quiet, the Admiral hisses at her. You're wasting your time. I didn't do anything! Alice pauses. This time. You will remain seated, the Admiral orders her. I'm not letting you out of my sight this time, Alice. And once the Grand Judge affirms your culpability, I will take great satisfaction in returning you behind bars. Yeah, because that went well for you last time, Alice rolls her eyes. This time will be different, the Admiral vows. What the heck kind of trial? All right, everyone, no need to panic. The party has arrived. <laughs> a familiar voice sounds from behind you. At a sheer instinct, you throw yourself behind a plant as the Admiral and Alice glance back at the new arrival. You're still not entirely sure you're supposed to be up here, so it's better safe than sorry, right? You peek out from behind the shrubbery as a young man with black hair walks down the aisle of the courtroom, his black coat and celestial scarf trailing behind him. You recognize him from the other day. Well, I can't go on. Is he one of the Star Seekers? So kind of you to join us, Grand Judge Zion. The Admiral bows her head respectfully. I appreciate your appearance, given the short notice. Yeah, yeah, no worries. He waves a hand at her as he hops up the steps of the bench before sitting down and placing his feet up on the table. He rests his hands behind his head. Not like I was doing much anyways. Let's just make this quick. Certainly, the Admiral nods. I've left all the necessary files on the table before you. The man blinks, lifting his feet and grabbing at the files quickly. Whoa, you sure you gave me the files and not the manuscript of a novel? Let's see here. The man leans forward, flipping through the pages and resting his head in his hands. Uh, Fennett's name... Alice, right? It's actually Elise, Alice states. Don't be ridiculous, the Admiral glares at her before looking back at Zion. That's correct, Grand Judge. Cool, cool, cool. And he nods, though he doesn't seem to re like he's really listening. And, uh, it says here you're being charged with... Numerous accounts of uh, assault and battery, a few misdemeanors, and uh, most notably, a charge of arson with malicious intent. Is that correct? Man, why does that make sense? So I beat a, people, a couple of people up and burned some stuff. It's not that big of a deal, Alice replies. Oh, so burning down an Aegean captain's dwelling is no big deal to you? Zion tilts his head curiously. Say what? Alice pauses. Surely you haven't forgotten, the Admiral glowers at her. Years ago, before you disappeared from Erwin and joined that gang of pirates, you set my house on fire. I what? Alice's eyes widen. Jeez, seriously, Alice? So, how do you plead? Not guilty, obviously, Alice snaps at him. Ah, wonderful. I love it when they do that. <laughs> He laughs, looking back at the reports. You can't help but bite your nails. And, uh, Admiral, I can only assume you will act as the prosecutor in this particular case. Of course, the Admiral nods. It's my duty to bring criminals like this to justice. All right, 
Zion begins to take some quick notes on the reports in front of him. And for your defense, Alice, would you like to represent yourself or... Uh, hang on a minute! Without thinking, you rush into the fray, jogging down the aisle to stand before Zion. The Admiral's eyes widen. You again? She blinks in shock. Who in all of Rem let you up here? You can't just go around interrupting official court proceedings. Dead guy! Zion grins, standing up from his chair and slamming his hands down on the desk. Yo, what's up? Didn't we just run into each other yesterday? You know him, Grand Judge? The Admiral pauses in shock. Duh. <laughs> Basically buddies. I mean, I barely know you, but I guess if you want to be buddies... Is this relevant? The Admiral steps in again. I don't know. I didn't get to that part yet. Uh, what are you doing here, Rex? I came here to help my friend. The emotion of Ellis. I don't really know what's going on here, but I feel like this is all some big misunderstanding. Hang on. You know this criminal? Well, is it a criminal? Probably. Wow, thanks, Rex. Ellis casts you a cold gaze. Okay, well, what I mean is... You try to reiterate... Ellis might be abrasive, aggressive, and a pretty intimidating person, but she doesn't act without reason. Except for that one time when she tried to roast me alive. You're not helping! She snaps at you. She's not like that, Zion. I mean, your honor. I mean, Grand Judge! Uh-huh. Zion considers your argument. And... You're convinced about all that? Look, I know that if she said she didn't do it, then she didn't. This is ridiculous. The Admiral shakes her head. This is completely contradicts the proper etiquette of a trial, Grand Judge. True, Zion nods. But it's making mo things more interesting. If you're so certain of her innocence, Rex, why don't you prove it? How? Before you barged in, I was going to ask your little friend if they had any legal representation for the proceedings. Obviously, I can't convict anyone without hearing both sides of the argument and making a clear, unbiased decision on whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty. As far as I'm aware, she doesn't have any kind of legal help in this case. So, why don't you take that role for her? I think I'd rather go to prison than let this idiot represent me. I mean, that can be arranged. Diane smiles at her. And if it's what it takes to clear Ellis's name, then fine. The Admiral grits her teeth. I object! Overruled! This is going to be a lot more fun than I thought. He stands up from his chair. The defense requires time to gather their evidence and formulate their arguments. Therefore, I will call a two-hour recess before this case proceeds. Rex, you and your client may speak in one of the offices downstairs. I'll have my dear secretary unlock one of the doors for you. Once your conversation concludes, however, the defendant is to remain in that office until the court is once again in session. Perfect. Thank you so much, Grand Judge. Just Zion's. Fine, he states. Now, off you go. Defense arguments don't write themselves. This isn't a game, Grand Judge. The Admiral approaches his bench, lowering her voice. This is a serious matter. This with the destruction, destruction of my home, not to mention the cause of countless physical injuries and damages it to the district of Carpera. It'll be fine, he dismisses her. I know what I'm doing, remember? <clears throat> of course, Grand Judge. Whatever you say. Ella sighs in relief, looking back at you. I probably have a lot of explaining to do, don't I? Yeah, you think? Ugh. Ellis groans. Let's just talk in the office or something. I don't want to say another word in this room around... Her. <laughs> she gives the Admiral an aggressive side eye before walking past you her eyes flaring for just a moment as she huffs in frustration. Oh, boy. Okay. Just gotta... Uh, hello, I'm sorry for making you do more work. Okay. Alice? Where are you? <gasps> Alice! Okay. You close the door behind you as you enter the office and cross your arms. You've got a lot of explaining to do, young lady! You frown. She narrows her eyes at you. Don't talk to me like I'm a child, Rex. Burning the Admiral's house down? That's crazy! Rex, she leans forward. You've got to believe me here. I didn't do it. You hesitate before sighing. <sighs> I don't know, Alice. That sounds like such a you thing to do. 
I'm way more mature and rational than that, she argues. Okay, well, the first time we met, you burned Ren's cabin down. That was different, she tries to counter. And you always tell me how much you hate authority. You continue to argue with her. All the pieces line up. Okay, I'm not saying it's something I wouldn't do, but I seriously didn't do it. Her shoulders sag. You just have to trust me on this. I swear. <sighs> All right. Fine. Maybe you didn't do it. You smooth back your bangs. But if it wasn't you, then you still got a lot to explain. You stare at her with a solemn expression, your brow furrowed. You and the Admiral obviously have some history. Otherwise, she wouldn't instantly try to prosecute you for burning her house down. Ellis remains silent. Come on, you gotta tell me what actually happened here. She turns her head away from you. There's no point, she mutters. Not like you're gonna be able to change her mind. Well, you don't know that. I could find a way to uncover the truth. What truth? Truth of a case that happened years ago? Give me a break. <laughs> it, what? Just let me help you, Ellis. I don't need you to help me, she states. Besides, this isn't a fight that you should have to fight for me. She shakes her head, leaning back and avoiding your eyes. If I'm going down, then I'm going down. Simple as that. What? So you don't even want to try to refute these claims? It wouldn't matter either way. It won't change how the Admiral or that pretentious judge sees me. But Alice, you whine, stomping your foot. Just tell me your tragic backstory. Now I want to do it even less. She scowls at your tantrum. What's the only way I'll be able to help you with this case? I don't care, okay? I seriously don't care. I'm not telling you anything. I'll figure something out on my own like I always do. I don't need anyone to get me out of trouble. I don't need anyone looking down on me, and I don't need another excuse to be indebted to people. She stares at you. Just believe in me, okay? That's all I ask of you. <sighs> I will. Good, she nods. Thank you. She leans back. I got a couple of hours until the actual trial... Should be enough time to think of a plan for myself, so don't sweat it. I don't plan on going to prison. I'm serious about getting back to Ren and getting out of Erwin, no matter what. All right, then. Whatever you say, I will leave it to you. You turn your back on Alice, walking toward the door. Rex... She starts to call to you one last time, but her voice gets cut off. She gulps back her words, looking away once more and refusing to even watch you go. With your back to Ellis, you can't help but smirk as a newfound determination glints in your eye. There's no way you're leaving your friend alone to handle this herself. If she doesn't want to talk, then you'll just have to get to the bottom of this yourself. <laughs> just sit tight, Ellis. I got this. Figure this out. We just gotta uncover all the secrets of her backstory. Figure out what happened. Ah, oh, crap. So you exit the room. You can't help but groan at your circumstances. How are you supposed to defend Ellis if she doesn't give you any leads? It doesn't make any sense. Does she want to go to prison? You grumble as you glance back at the door. Mm. Come on, Alice. Can you just talk to me? Boo! Ah! You scream in alarm, spinning around to find Zion standing behind you, a huge grin on his face. He snorts, beginning to cackle at your reaction. <laughs> Man, don't scare me like that! You snap at him. No, oh, come on! He wipes away his tears. How could I resist? You look so serious. <laughs> I just had to. What are you doing here? I'm not allowed to rock around my own courthouse. He raises an eyebrow, resting his hands on his hips. I, I meant more like right here in this hallway. I'm bored, he explains simply. 
An hour is a really long time to wait, so why don't you quit leaving me in suspense and tell me how your little talk went? <sighs> right. About that. Yeesh. Not bad, huh? She's not telling me anything! She didn't answer a single question. Feels like she's already pretty much resigned to her fate, and the case hasn't even started. You vent. Sounds rough, he nods casually. So obviously, I have to get to the bottom of things myself. And, uh, how do you plan on doing that? Zion asks. You lower your voice, crossing your arms and putting on your patented serious face. I'm gonna uncover Ellis's mysterious backstory. Right. <laughs> I don't really have any other choice. She doesn't want to tell me what happened back then. There's no way for me to clear her name. <sighs> Therefore, the only solution is to put together my own timeline of events. Your eyes widen as an idea sparks in your mind. And I think I know exactly where to start! Oh? When we first came to Arrowwind, there was a guy that Ellis knew from her past visits to the city. You explain. I can start by asking him a couple questions. This guy have a name? Kylan... something. I don't know his last name. Alright. And where do we find this Kylan guy? Wait. We? What? You think I'm missing out on this? <laughs> no way. He puts his arm around your shoulder. Plus, you already got the chance to hang out with Arden and Ambi. That means it's my turn. <laughs> you wouldn't deny the Grand Judge, would you? I... Uh, I... Uh, uh, I guess not, but will tagging along make you a biased party? Nah, it'll be fine. He waves away your concern. So, where will we head? Uh, I'm not sure. I know he works at the docks, but I don't specifically know where. Sometimes he hangs out at the tavern at night, though. You only have two hours, remember? Zion points out. You can't just wait around till nighttime to find your guy. Oh, shoot. What should I do here? Well, don't panic just yet. Let me see what I can do, okay? Check this out. Zion waltz out to the lobby, approaching the annoyed and exhausted young lady behind the desk. Oh, Enid, he calls to her. God, what now? Get me every file you have on the registered dock workers in Carpera. First name, Kylan. Wait, you could do that? Why wouldn't I? If they're a sin of heroin, we have their records. How else are we supposed to call people in a jury duty? Is this an urgent request, Grand Judge? The woman asks slowly. That it is, he nods. We need those files ASAP! Chop, chop! Uh, you watch in amazement as the secretary, Enid, shuffles through some filing cabinets, eventually withdrawing one file in particular and handing it to Zion. Here, this matches your description. Registered citizen of Arrowin, an official employee with the Carpera Docks Unpacking and Distribution Company. First name Kion, last name Driscoll, lives in the Carpera Docks District, house number 145. Whoa! You have his entire life story on a single sheet of paper! What do you think, Rex? Pretty cool, huh? Now that we got his address, should be a piece of cake to find your guy and interrogate him. I, I, I don't know if interrogate's the right word. You pause. I just want to talk. Th th that's all. Yeah, sure, talk. What did I say? Oh, boy. Kylan, I'm sorry in advance. Okay. To, uh, House 145. Whatever that means. This is, uh, interesting. So this is the... Uh, how many Star Seekers have I personally interacted with now? So, there was Arden. Ambrosia introduced me to the city. What, does he call her Ambi? Huh. And, uh... Lily helped me interact with Freya. Oh, my. That's a lot of important people. Is this it? Uh, let me knock. You awkwardly raise a hand and knock on the door three times. You step back. Swaying on your feet and glancing at Zion. You sure this is the right place? It's what it said on his file. Zion shrugs. 
Then again, I don't necessarily make it a habit to go out and visit citizens at their front door. Oh, right. Don't sweat it. <laughs> the young man claps you on the back. I didn't think the fixer of heroin would be so high strung. There's just a lot at stake here, man. I'm just worried about my friend. Chill out. She'll be fine. Probably, he says. Still, his words aren't particularly comforting. After a moment, you hear the door unlock from the inside and creak open. Kylan yawns, standing before you and Zion with an exhausted expression. His hair and clothes are disheveled, and he looks as though he just woke up. Uh, who's there? What are you- He starts to say as he rubs the sleep out of his eyes, looking at the two of you. Instantly, you see his eyes widen as his gaze wanders from you to Zion. He waves at him in a friendly manner. Oh, God. Morning, Kylan! What the hell did you do? He asks immediately, stepping forward and grabbing you by the collar. Do you have any idea who's standing behind you? He brings a hand to his temple. Oh, God. It happened, didn't it? Did you? He starts to whisper to you. Did you snitch on me, Rex? I swear to Unity, if you snitch. What? No, I'm not a snitch, dude! Then why the heck is the Grand Judge with you? You both look back at Zion simultaneously. Zion grins. Oh, don't mind me. He puts up his hands innocently. I am but a casual spectator. That's all. <laughs> However, his eyes narrow at Kylan. That is, unless you have something to hide. <laughs> no way! Kylan here is an open book. No secrets here. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Kylan face palms at your incredibly obvious reply. Zion continues to just smile. Oh yeah, so there's nothing you got tucked away in there? He asks kindly, trying to peek around Kylan into his home. No. Kylan answers with a straight face, trying to body block Zion's view into his home. Then we can come in, right? Since you have nothing to hide. Also no. Uh, look, am I in trouble or not? Kylan asks, stepping out of his house and lightly closing the door behind him. It's not normal to get house calls from the Grand Judge and the Fixer of Erwin, so just give it to me straight. You notice him gulp nervously, his brow furrowing. Okay, don't, don't freak out. Too late, he says simply. You inhale and exhale calmly. Alice is in trouble. His expression falters. Wait, Alice? What happened? The Admiral caught her and arrested her. Apparently she burned down the Admiral's house a couple of years ago, but she promises she didn't, so I'm trying to investigate what really happened. And in order to do that, I need to know more about her cool, mysterious backstory. You hang your head. That's why I'm here. And Zion's tagging along too. Zion? Jeez, what kind of jobs have you been doing to get you on first name basis? Kylan blinks in surprise. That's not important. You wave your hand at him. I know you and Ellis have history. Tell me everything. He rubs the back of his neck. <sighs> I don't know, Rex. I'm pretty sure she'd knock my lights out if I told you any of that stuff, especially without her permission. Man, she's already in trouble. Does that really matter right now? He blinks. <sighs> Good point. He scowls. All right, fine, but let's not talk out here. He holds the door open for you and Zion. Come on in. You can take a seat at the table over there. Just don't touch anything. Thank you for your hospitality. <laughs> Zion chuckles, waltzing in. Kylan groans. Oh, God, help me. Ooh. Quaint. Kylan sighs as he seats himself across from you and Zion. All right, what exactly did you want to know? Zion glances around the room casually, resting his hands behind his head and putting his feet up on the table. Hey, look at this place. Pretty snazzy, don't you think, Rex? Yeah, it, it's a nice place, Kylan. Ah, it doesn't matter! You shake your head quickly, focusing on the task at hand. I want you to start at the beginning. You lean forward. When we first came to Erwin, Alice told me she'd been here before. I'm guessing that's when you well, it's when you guys met, right? He nods slowly. Yes. When was that? You ask. 
How did you guys meet? What, what happened when Ellis first came to Erwin? Kylan hesitates. Zion sighs. <sighs> Come on, spill the beans. I'm on the edge of my seat here. I really gotta know to help her out of this mess. Please, Kylan. Calm down. I'm gonna tell you. I'm just trying to think of where to begin. He leans back in his chair and stares up at the ceiling. Look, just before I start, remember that Alice and I were different people back then. Times were tough, and sometimes people had to make hard decisions to survive. He crosses his arms, casting a gaze at Zion. The only reason I'm sharing any of this with either of you is to do my part in helping Alice out. That's it. This better not incriminate me, you hear? You got it, right, Zion? Zion puts his hands up, shrugging. Whatever you say, buddy. All right, then. In that case, it all started a couple of years ago. He leans forward, staring into the flame of a nearby candle. It was close to midnight, I think. I was leaving Cassandra's tavern after another night of drinking and gambling. You know how it goes. It was a rough day, and I needed a way to unwind. Unfortunately, I may have gone a little bit overboard and spent more than I wanted. So I had to walk home with barely any copper in my pockets. It was pretty cold that night, too, from what I remember. Winter was right around the corner. As Kylan continues his narrative, you follow his gaze into the flames. And your eye begins to wander and his voice almost echoes all around you as the story continues. However, your body loosens and relaxes, almost as though you are entering a deep and meditative trance, fixated by the fire before you. You pause, staring at Kylan as he begins to leave Cassandra's tavern. You can't help but shiver at the chill in the air. All right, that's enough for me, Kylan mutters from the doorframe. You emptied my pockets hours ago. Good night, Cass. Cassandra's voice is heard from inside within the tavern. I was helping you out. Can't get robbed out there if you don't have any coin to steal. <laughs> Walk safe, Kylan. Cassandra bids him farewell. He rolls his eyes at the sentiment, chuckling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Years have passed since this day, and it shows. And the Kylan you know is far more mature in appearance, with dark bags more prevalent under his eyes and shorter, modest hair. This Kylan, however, is rough in appearance, his, long and sha his hair long and shaggy, and his outfit far more colorful, although his purple scarf remains stubbornly wrapped around his neck. Kylan closes the door to the tavern, placing his hands in his pockets. He glances up at the sta stars. His breath momentarily, cha his teeth momentarily chattering together due to the cold. He adjusts his jacket around his figure before walking into the night, whistling a tune as he goes. He hums. Kylan continues forward, keeping his eyes forward with a young, unconcerned air about him. He still has the stench of alcohol about him so no doubt he's had more than a few drinks at Cassandra's tavern. Perhaps that's how he remains blissfully ignorant of the stealthy shadow that continues to trail behind him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He pauses, glancing back as a barrel is knocked over behind him. He narrows his eyes into the darkness and confusion, before eventually shrugging it off. He continues forward, however. The shadow suddenly jumps out while his back is turned, grabbing his jacket aggressively. Ah! He cries out in surprise. He quickly slams the figure to the ground, brushing himself off and backing away while panting. The figure's hands burst with flames, illuminating the pair in the darkness. A young and worse for wear teenager glares at Kylan with fierce and fiery eyes. A kid? Kylan questions. You're gonna regret throwing me, you hear? Empty your pockets unless you want to get burnt! Huh. He frowns. A magic. So you're the infamous fire thief everyone's been talking about. But you're so... He looks her up and down. Not what I expected. What? What's that supposed to mean, huh? 
I guess I was expecting someone older. Not a kid. Who are you calling kid? She snaps, her eyes flaring for a moment. Pretty rich coming from you. You're not that old yourself, moron. She storms over to him, grabbing him by the collar. Now quit wasting my time. Unless you want to get pummeled, you'll hand over whatever money you've got. Capiche? I don't have much. His jaw tightens. You'd be better off robbing someone else. You think I believe that? You people always have something. Cough it up. She holds up a single flaming fist. Or do you need a demonstration of what this kid can do? Kylan puts his hands up. All right. All right, just calm down, okay? I don't want any trouble. He reaches into his pockets and withdraws a couple of copper. It's all the money I've got. I swear, just chill out with the fire, would you? The young woman glares at him, letting him go and snatching the coins for herself. She chuckles, observing them as they shine in the moonlight. <laughs> Good choice, loser. Now get out of my face! Without another word, she rushes off into the night, vanishing around a corner. Kylan's face contorts as he watches her go, while his mouth curls into a frown. His eyes glisten with sympathy. He watches the young woman run away from him with hesitation. His knees shake as though he wants to run after her, but his body keeps him in place. Oh, for unity's sake, he groans before beginning to jog after the girl quickly. Doesn't look too different. rushes around the corner, dropping to one knee and ducking behind a barrel. He narrows his eyes, peeking out at the young woman as she plops herself down among the random crates and boxes that litter the alleyway. There's a single lantern set up to her right, and a large burlap sack resting inside a crate, which has been set on its side to create a makeshift roof. All right, let's see what we've got, the girl murmurs, kneeling down next to the sack and pulling it back revealing a small pouch of coins underneath. She begins to go through the pouch, ducking into the crate to count her bounty. She counts up each of the coins in her palm. That's a loaf of bread right there. And if I add this... No way! That's jam! This, this could be butter! I can make a full sandwich with this! Her eyes light up at the news. Kylan looks down at the floor with a frown on his face and a furrowed brow. He sighs, standing up straight and walking over to the girl's box. Oh, for unity's sake. Hey, kid. What? She exclaims. What are you doing here? You got a death wish or something, pal? You're not getting your money back if that's what you want. Forget the coin. He shakes his head. You obviously need it more than I do. What's that supposed to mean? It means you're living out of a crate, celebrating when you can buy bread. So come on, get up. The girl narrows her eyes at him, carefully creeping out of her crate. What do you want? I want to keep a random kid from catching a cold, he sighs, putting his hands on his hips. Maybe get you some real food. When's the last time you ate? What's the matter to you? <laughs> You're trying to pity me or something? I don't need it. Of course you don't, he narrows his eyes. That's why you're stealing money from people, because you don't need pity. You don't know me, she snaps at him. So stop pretending to be some knight in shining armor. It's stupid. Kylan stares at her for some time before rubbing the back of his neck. You got a name, kid? I'm not a kid. 
We're practically the same age! Fine. Do you have a name? Alice, she replies, crossing her arms. All right, then. Alice, here's the deal, Kylan says, leaning on a nearby crate. You clearly need help. I can help you, but I'm not going to do it for free. I already told you you're not getting your money back. Well, I better get some of it back if you're going to be living with me. <laughs> like I said, I'm not helping you for free. She glares at him. What's your game here? You make a habit of taking your muggers to dinner? Not exactly. Then again, most of my muggers aren't sleeping in burlap sacks. I'm giving you a fair deal to keep you off the streets and out of trouble. Would you prefer stealing and running from the law? Alice doesn't respond. Kylan grumbles. Look, I know what you're going through. You don't know anything about me. I know that you're doing whatever you can to survive. And I know that you've got no one else to turn to. Otherwise, you wouldn't be out here. He narrows his eyes. Don't be stubborn, all right? Someone's handing you a home on a silver platter here. All you gotta do is cool it with the fire fists and accept the help. Alice hesitates. What are the rest of your terms? You get yourself a job. Heck, I can set you up with something. I know some people who could use an extra pair of hands. You pay me rent, and you earn your keep. In exchange, you get food and a roof over your head. Do we have a deal? He extends a hand. Alice is still hesitant, but after a moment, she grumbles and accepts his offer, shaking his hand. So he helps her survive. Something like that, Kylan says. She was in need, and I had the space. There's silence. Hey, Rex, are you listening to me? What's with that look? Hello? Huh? Kylan waves his hand in front of your face. You jolt, blinking rapidly as you look around the room. Zion tilts his head at you, and Kylan furrows his brow in concern. You good, Rex? Yeah, sorry, I was just... spacing out, I guess. Kylan stares at you suspiciously, but eventually just nods at you before sitting back in his seat and clearing his throat. As I was saying... He ended up making the deal where she'd stay with me. In exchange, she turns her life around and gets money through more conventional means, or, I guess, as conventional as she could. He rubs the back of his neck. Didn't exactly have many connections back then, so couldn't always give her the best jobs. But the baseline of it all is that I couldn't leave her out in the cold. He understood what she was going through. Kylan blinks at response, sputtering. <laughs> I don't know if I'd put it like that. He glances between you and Zion, trying to defend himself. When he realizes that neither of you are falling for his stubborn denial, he just grumbles. All right, fine. For as much crud as I give her, I was just another spunky kid trying to do my best to survive in the city, too. What happened after that? I'd help her find a couple odd jobs here and there, he starts to explain. What kind of jobs? Zion asks, like he's seeing his fingers together and leaning forward. Nothing... arsony, right? No, he answers with an annoyed expression. However, he does his best to hide his distaste. But let's just say the people I knew always had a use for a pair of strong fists. Was she a hitman? No! She, he snaps at you. She just... rough people up sometimes. Look, a lot of the time when she got a job, I didn't ask what she did with it. The only one I'm certain of is her job with Cassandra. She worked with Cassandra? It's the safest thing I could get her. As far as I'm aware, Cassandra just had her acting as a... Mouncer, of sorts. Making sure no one gets too rough after a couple rounds of drinks. That sort of stuff. I see. Anything else? That's all I know, Kylan states. Next thing I knew, she ran away with pirates. Didn't see her for years until recently. He frowns. And of course, the first thing she does is ask me for work. Some things never change. 
So you don't know anything about her burning down the Admiral's house? No, I don't know anything about that. But do you think she's... You don't think she's the type to do that kind of thing, right? I'm going to be honest with you, Rex. Kylan leans forward, resting his elbows on the table. The odds are pretty good. No, come on! She's a loose cannon. Tick her off, and she goes off. But she said she didn't do it! You knew her! You seriously think she's a liar? In all the time I've known Ella, she said a lot of things. And a lot of the time, she didn't actually mean it. He scowls, looking away. Well, that sounds promising, doesn't it? The plot thickens, Rex. I guess if you don't know anything else... I told you everything I knew. In that case, we'll go investigate elsewhere. Thanks for all the info, Kylan. At least it gave us some kind of starting point. <sighs> it's a good thing what you're doing, Rex. Trying to get her out of trouble, I mean. I'll do my best. She's not the kind of girl who asks for help. Just get to the bottom of this and figure out the truth so I don't have to worry about her ungrateful butt anymore. You got it, man. Thanks. Okay. Cassandra, then. Hmm. Maybe. Zion strains after you, resting his hands behind his head. Well, that was fruitful, huh? He asks you. That was a start. It didn't give me nearly as much info as I thought. Look at you, acting like a proper detective. <laughs> I can see why Arden spoke so highly of you. Pretty funny. He tosses his hair. All right, then. Where to next? Kylan gave us a new lead. Said that Ellis worked for Cassandra. So, what? You think that Cassandra will know more than the person Ellis actually lived with? I don't know. Just guessing here. Zion stares at you for some time, before grinning. Well, I suppose a guessing game will definitely keep things interesting. It's no fun having all the answers all the time. How is that even possible? Let's just say I have a great intuition. Zion puts a finger to his lips cheekily. Why else would they make me the grand judge, eh? Before you can respond, he continues. Now, come on, let's go investigate the new lead of yours. No one said that finding answers would be easy. Right. Sandra should be at her tavern right around now. Let's head over there. Not that one. Not that one. I always, I always think the building's right around the corner, but then it's not. I think it's that one. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yes! Okay, here we go. Looks empty. Okay. Hello. Cassandra sits behind the counter of her tavern, casually polishing some glasses in the sink. The door closes loudly behind you as you enter, and Zion looks around the area in interest. You know, I've been around Erwin for a while now. I don't think I've ever even been here. I'm having all kinds of new experiences today, eh? You chuckle a bit at his statement before turning back to Cassandra. She had her back to you in Zion, and she calls to you idly. Welcome in. Take a seat anywhere and just shout if you need me. Hey, Cassandra! Consider us in need of help. From you. And clear your throat awkwardly. Zion snickers at you. Nailed it. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. You argue against him, embarrassed. Cassandra turns back to you and Zion. He raises an eyebrow. She raises an eyebrow at you. Huh? If it isn't the fixer of Erwin. And the Grand Judge. She clears her throat, putting on a smile. <clears throat> to what do I owe the pleasure? We're just here to ask you a couple of questions, if that's okay. I see. Fancy yourself a detective today, Fixer. <laughs> You're certainly a dread of many jobs and titles, aren't you? You rub the back of your head sheepishly. What can I say? I guess I got a knack for finding trouble. Before she can say anything else, you interject again. Speaking of uh, finding trouble, uh, you know Ellis, right? Obviously. <laughs> Cassandra smirks. Cool, because she's the trouble, and I need help clearing her name. The woman doesn't seem surprised by your statement. 
Yeah, uh, I figured as much. Why else would you wander into my tavern with the Grand Judge? Hmm? Obviously something e something legal was going on. And knowing Alice, she would be stuck in the middle of it. So, you're familiar with the defendant in question? Zion puts his hands on his hips. We talked to Kylan, she's, and he said that she worked jobs for you. You bet. <laughs> she did a ton of different job, different things for me. She was a great worker. Totally good at her job, too. This sucks. She was a little too good sometimes. What kind of jobs did she have here? Oh, you know. Cassandra waves a hand about trying to explain. Sometimes taverns will have uh, difficult patrons. I think they get too rowdy after a drink or two where they refuse to pay their tab. So, at times, I needed a little muscle to enforce the rules. That's all. So, like a bouncer? Yeah, essentially. We'll go with that. So what did you mean she was too good? She sets down the glasses before crossing her arms. You know how Alice can be. She's not exactly the type who likes to reason with people. If someone ticks her off, they're in for a rude awakening. <laughs> she sighs, reminiscing as she leans over the counter. <sighs> I, used to have her to, I used to have to bail her out of trouble all the time. It wasn't uncommon for her to have run-ins with the guards because of her nature. If these revenants were as common as you said. Then why'd you put up with her? Because at the end of the day, she still got the job done. Plus, what else is they going to do? Let that girl rot away in prison? You seem almost fond of Ellis. Did you guys spend a lot of time with her? Uh, I don't know about a lot. But we had our moments, she says, resting her head in her hand. <laughs> I remember there was this one night... I was standing right here, finishing up my shift, and she was right over at that table, nursing her hands after a night on the town. She points toward the table. You stare at it, tilting your head curiously as Cassandra continues. Everyone was gone for the evening. I was cleaning out a few leftover mugs, trying to strike up a friendly conversation, nothing too special. But Ellis was never one for casual chats. Cassandra's voice... Gets, sounds more and more distant as she continues, and you allow your mind to wander. Empty night. Huh. Ellis stands over a bowl of ice water and shakes, uh, and shakes out her hands, wincing. Dang it! She hisses under her breath, picking up a towel from her left and massaging her skin carefully, keeping her hands above her heart. Rough fight? Cassandra call asks her from the counter. Alice doesn't look at her. Arrogant jerk was trying to skip on my cut, she states with a cold tone. So I put him in his place. Sheesh, Cassandra murmurs. Talk about unlucky. That's the third guy this month, right? <laughs> she huffs. Whatever. I'm almost impressed, Cassandra states, walking around the bar. She seats herself at Alice's table, taking a swig from her mug. Erwin's a nice place. It's weird that you seem to be the one person stuck in the worst parts of it. Alice considers her statement before glancing toward the door. Huh. Guess that means I don't belong in this place. Eh, uh, don't think like that. Cassandra shakes her head, waving her hand at Alice to dismiss her con comment. You'll work your way out eventually. Yeah, out of here, she mumbles. Come on, Cassandra leans forward. You work so hard to keep everyone satisfied. Picking up a job with unity knows who. And all you want to think about is skipping town? What else am I supposed to do? Alice shrugs her shoulders. There's nothing for me here. I don't really care about this city or the people in it. Ouch. Cassandra frowns. I'm hurt. Alice doesn't respond. So that's what you really want out of all of this? Cassandra practically lays across the table, looking up at Alice. A paycheck? Can't survive this place without money, Alice answers simply. 
Everything in this city runs off making some kind of income. Without some coin in your pocket, you're left on the side of the road to starve. She shakes her head. I'm sick of that. I want as much money as I can get. Careful. Keep talking like that and you'll end up sounding like a pirate or something. <laughs> pirate, huh? Alice raises an eyebrow at this suggestion. Don't get any ideas, Cassandra states. Those guys are just selfish criminals, as far as I can tell. It doesn't matter to them if they gotta step on and get rich quick. Sounds like my kind of gig. <laughs> well, you definitely get in enough trouble for it. <sighs> then I probably won't be able to keep bailing you out. I don't care. I can handle things on my own. Cassandra's eyes narrow. You can't seriously think you can do things by yourself. Why not? <laughs> you gotta look out for yourself more than anyone else. Yeah, but if you always look out for yourself, then one day you're not gonna have anyone to keep you out of trouble. I don't think that's gonna be a problem for me. Alice replies plainly. Cassandra stares at Alice for a while before groaning. Ugh! Maybe we just drop this topic. I'm starting to get a headache. Probably from all that whiskey. Shut it, you. Cassandra states, bringing her hand to her temple. Oh, it doesn't help that tonight already sucked. What happened? I was gone for just a couple hours. This guy wasn't paying his tab and got all defensive. And Keeper rolls her eyes. He starts demanding free drinks, his compensation for my... Inappropriate behavior. <laughs> she spits into a nearby bucket. Huh. Alice considers her statement. You need me to rough him up? Uh, I know. Cassandra shrugs her shoulders. I can do it, Alice states, shaking out her hands one last time. Slow your roll. Cassandra straightens up, stumbling to her feet. I was just complaining. No. Really? Alice says before walking over to her and placing her hands on Cassandra's shoulders. I'll get your money, and you pay me extra, and we both go home happy. Deal? Cassandra stares at her in disbelief, before sighing. Alright, alright. Whatever you say, Alice. She definitely was ambitious. Ambitious is one word for it. Zion sighs. A hand goes to your shoulder. Rex, did you catch all that? Come on, the table's not that interesting, is it? Mm -hmm. Zion shakes your shoulder playfully, laughing. You doing okay? <laughs> You're spacing out more than me in court. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Wait, are you the judge? How the heck do you anyways? Zion instantly brushes off your statement, turning back to Cassandra. What I'm picking up from your little story is that our defendant was quite the money-hungry worker, right? No amount of copper was good enough for her, Cassandra answers simply. I mean, she's like that now too. You scratch your chin. She's in charge of all of her finances. She pushed me to take a bunch of jobs in the first place to make money. But for that, I probably wouldn't be known as the fixer at all. Hmm. Zion copies your pose. Sounds like she was really eager to leave. Maybe she was even running from something. Do you know anything about that? About us running from something? Cassandra raises her eyebrow. Besides the law... No. I'm starting to think I don't know here nearly as well as I think. Don't sweat it. Cassandra states. She's not the sharing type. You said you talked to Kylan before, right? Mm-hmm. She practically lived with the guy, and I bet he's just as much in the dark about how Alice really is as you are. She never liked being tied down by something, or someone. Probably why she always ended up bickering with the guards. <sighs> Do you know anything about her... burning the Admiral's house down? You know, I did hear about that fire, Cassandra nods, and think that Alice was involved. I guess it makes sense, given her disposition. You think she could have done it? It fits the bill. 
If there was any singular guard that she feuded with the most, it would be the Admiral. That woman was always hounding Alice for causing trouble. Pretty sure the Admiral had to arrest Alice a couple times. Ha! Awesome! That's not incriminating at all. Do you remember any of these arrests in particular? Uh, just one comes to mind. I remember she took one of her jobs a bit too far and thrashed a merchant of notable importance. I was actually on my way to bail her out, but by the time I arrived, they were already cleaning up the scene. From what I saw, it was the Admiral's Lieutenant, Saren, who made the arrest that day. You'd have to ask her for more information. Cassandra glances toward the door as a couple of patrons enter the tavern. Now, if that's going to be it, I do have customers to attend to. I think this story's gone on long enough. Understood. Thanks anyway, Cassandra. Oh. Dang, she got in a lot of fights. I guess she has always been the rough and tumble type. Zion stretches his arms. Man, it is cramped in there! Ugh. He grunts, arching his back to try to limber up again. Looks like another dead end, though. We still haven't heard anything about Ellis burning the Admiral's house down. Not to mention, they haven't exactly heard any stellar reviews of her character. So, where to next? Let me think. Sandra talked about some kind of event that led to her arrest a couple years ago. And when the Admiral was talking about Ellis in the courtroom, it seemed the two had more history than just Ellis supposedly burning her house down. True, true. In that case, we should try and figure out more about their past encounters. Tavern Keeper told you the name of a lieutenant who headed her arrest, right? Yeah, I think she said her name was Lieutenant Saren. Well, if it's a lieutenant you're looking for, that means they'll probably be at the respective captain's barracks. Lieutenants of Captain Lane are located in Latona Gate, while lieutenants of the Admiral are here in Carpera. Perfect. Let's go look for her there, then. Just gotta figure out what that is. I think it was this way. I remember seeing it before. Here. Mm. A stern and proud dread stands within the open training grounds of the Carpera Barracks. She has her arms folded behind her back as she watches over the various guards, slashing into the collection of straw dummies before her. She keeps her chin held high and her feet apart, as though she were ready for anything. You frown at her posture, feeling unprofessional by just standing in her presence. Is that who we're looking for? You ask Zion. How should I know? He asks, resting his hands behind his head. You're literally a star seeker! What does it mean I keep track of the members of the Aegean Vanguard? It's Bastion's job. You blink at him in disbelief, before just groaning. Well, since the Admiral's back at the courthouse, I'm going to assume the person who looks vaguely in charge of the lieutenant we're looking for. You both approach the dread cautiously. You clear your throat to announce your presence. Uh, hey, are you Lieutenant Saren, or, or is she around here at all? The dread glances back at you. I'm Lieutenant Saren, she answers. Do you have something to report, citizen, or... She pauses, looking at your companion. Ah, she immediately fumbles. Grand Judge of Nox Recretor, my, my apologies, I had no idea. Hey, chill out, Lieutenant! Zion gives her a mock salute. No need to be so formal. I'm not in trouble, am I? It's not common place that these barracks are visited by anyone other than my captain. Don't freak out, we just had some questions, that's all. If these questions are for the Admiral, then I'm afraid she's not here at the moment. We're not here for the Admiral, Zion corrects her. Although it is about the Admiral. Kinda. I'm... Confused. She froze her brow. Do you know about a woman named Dallas? Instantly, Saren's expression darkens. Yes. I've heard that name before. She was the one charged with the arson of the Admiral's home, correct? Uh, we don't know for certain if it was her. That's what we're still trying to figure out. As the lieutenant continues to stand before you with a brank expression, you grumble. It's okay, look, I have reason to believe she didn't do it. Clearly. Well, I just need to gather the proof. And the, uh, grand judge is helping me, you try to explain. So I wanted to ask if you could tell me more about the time Alice was arrested a couple of years ago. Which time? Saren says, asks you immediately. How many times are there? 
I'm not sure you want the answer to that question. Lovely. Zion smiles, clapping his hands together. All right, new question. Uh, can you tell me about one of the more notable times? Like, was there any particular day that stuck out to you? The more we can learn about Alice, the closer we might get to clearing her name. Hmm. The lieutenant considers your question. Well, if you must know, there was one day that especially stuck with me. Wait, really? What happened? It wasn't pretty. Keep in mind, at the time, arresting Alice for disturbance of the peace or battery was not uncommon for us members of the Vanguard. We all became quite familiar with her name and her face. At one point, the Admiral even had a code word for her and her antics. We called it Code Orange. That's almost impressive. Zion's eyes widen. However, I remember one arrest when it seemed the Admiral and Alice were both equally fed up with one another, she continues. I had just arrested Alice for assaulting a rather important merchant and member of the Gilded Collective. Did you know why she did that? I couldn't glean much from her angered rambling, but I did understand that she was upset with him for cutting her pay for some reason, she says. I brought her to these barracks, and as soon as I arrived, the Admiral was waiting at the front steps. Then she asked me and Alice to follow her into office to talk. Saren frowns. I think a part of her was anticipating the arrival of the tavern keep, Cassandra, who tended to bail Alice out of trouble. We know that part. But what happened in the Admiral's office? The Admiral had a certain look about her. She seemed more irate and annoyed than usual. I didn't dare ask why, and kept my head down, merely giving her a detailed report on the arrest. The meeting was just like any other, but then Alice opened her mouth. Saren groans as she continues, massaging the bridge of her nose. Your head drifts to the side as you listen to her tale, the sounds of the ocean and cawing gulls soothing your mind as the scene lays itself out before you. So this is what her office looks like. The Admiral, Saren, and Alice all sit within the pristine office. Alice sits on the other side of the Admiral's desk, facing the woman with a cold gaze. She crosses her arms and sinks in her chair as she scoffs at the captain. Look, can we just get this over with already? Just charge me for whatever dumb rule I broke so I can go. I don't think you understand the position you're in, Alice, the Admiral says, resting her elbows on her desk. I understand complete perfectly. You're wasting your time with me instead of solving any of the actual problems with this city. The man you assault today was a member of the Gilded Collective. Unfortunately, we can't turn a blind eye to an act of violence against a contributing member of the Merchant's Guild, the Admiral exclaims. Right, so when it's any other poor slob, you're fine just looking the other way. But the minute it's someone important, then suddenly you're up in arms, is that it? It's not like that. It's exactly like that! She interjects, standing up. You don't give a damn until some big shot's on the line. Do you have any idea how many people actually need help? Or do you just decide to ignore them? Or does none of that matter to you? Alice accuses. Do not speak to my captain like that, Saren tries to step in, but the Admiral raises a hand to her, silencing her immediately. She never takes her eyes off Alice. It's my duty to protect all of the people of Erwin. She states calmly. You're endangering those people with your violent antics. No, oh, yeah? Then where were you when I was endangered, huh? Where were you when I was living out on the streets, scrounging together coins? You like to play the hero, but what are you people, really? Just a bunch of losers in armor. <laughs> what a joke. Alice walks towards the door. Excuse me! The Admiral stands up, walking after her. We are not done here, Alice. You still have a lot to answer for. I'm done listening to you people, Ellis states simply. Go ahead. Charge me with assault or arson or whatever you want. I don't care anymore. Thanks for teaching me a valuable lesson, Admiral, Ellis says, putting her hands on her hips. Always look out for number one, because it's obvious that no one else will. Without another word, Ellis, stand uh, yeah, Ellis leaves the room, slamming the door shut behind her. The Admiral stands there in utter shock, stammering as her fists tremble. What? She... But... Saren's jaw tightens. She doesn't have an ounce of respect. Ignore her, Captain. 
<laughs> the Admiral mutters under her breath. I suppose there was some reasoning behind her anger, Saren admits. However, her conduct and her behavior were not appropriate. The Admiral and the Aegean Vanguard work very hard every day to ensure that the city of Erwin and its citizens are safe from any threat. Everyone's got something to complain about. That doesn't make their reasoning flawed. It's all a matter of perspective. Ain't that right, Detective? Right. And that's what happened. Saren concludes your narrative. Of course, after that day, Elsa and the Admiral continue to argue and fight. They clashed so many times outside of that moment until the Admiral eventually snapped. Snapped? You tilted your head. She officially arrested her to teach her a lesson, Saren states, bringing a hand to her chin. Which was out of character for the Admiral at the time. What do you mean by that? Before Alice came along, the Admiral was far more lenient with low-level crime and casual misdemeanors, the lieutenant explains. However, the day that Alice was finally arrested was the same day the Admiral stopped being so forgiving. I believe that Alice may actually be the reason why the Admiral is so strict with the rules to this day. How so? Zion puts his hands on his hips. Before the Admiral flipped, people used to abuse the rules. They would dance around the law and get out of trouble without any long-lasting consequences. So the conflict between the Admiral and Ellis led to the Admiral becoming more strict? You cross your arms, your brow furrowing as you take in the facts. All right, last question, you say to the lieutenant. Right now, Ellis is being charged with burning down the Admiral's house. Do you think she's the type of person who would do something like that? Saren hesitates. As a guard, can't make any opinions on situations like this. However, we had to replace seven training dummies the day she was finally arrested because she incinerated them after one of her bouts. That's not promising in the slightest. I'm sorry if that's not what you wanted to hear. However, if anyone is prone to setting things on fire, it is Ellis, Saren states. That pretty much follows everything else we've heard, Zion mutters. My offense is over before it even started. Now, if those are all your questions, I need to return to my own duties. Thank you for your time, Lieutenant. Zion gives her a small salute, taking some steps back off the sand pits. You hang your head, following him as he walks away from the guards to leave them to their training. You groan. Uh, what gives? I feel like the more I investigate, the more evidence I find against Alice. She definitely didn't make things easy for you. Seems to me like she there is good evidence pointing to her having committed this crime. Not only is she known for having a fiery temper, but she's had several known conflicts with the Admiral leading up to her initial arrest. You glare at him. He puts his hands up. Don't give me that look! I'm just trying to play devil's advocate! Forgive me for trying to stay unbiased. What should I do? I don't know. You're the detective here. Well, you're the judge! You gotta have some advice for me here! How am I supposed to clear Ellis's name if everyone else seems so sure that she's guilty? Try not to panic, firstly, he points at you. The case is far from over. We still don't know how the house fire started. You consider his argument. That's true. In that case, I think her next course of action should be investigating the source. The source? There's only one person who knows exactly what happened when Ellis got arrested. If anyone can answer questions about that day, it's going to be the Admiral herself. Zion tilts his head. You sure you want to use the prosecution as your next piece of evidence? It's likely that her testimony will be laced with bias against Ellis. The Admiral holds author or authority by maintaining order and sticking to the rules. That means she'll be honest with her story. I'm sure of it. All right, then. Why don't we go pay her a visit? She should still be at the courthouse. I mean, I never saw her leave. Good point. Let's go check it out. Oh, time across the city. Again. All right. Ha! Huh. Let's do it. Here we go. Time to interrogate the Admiral. And by interrogate, I mean ask humbly. Oh, 
here she is. All right. Moment of truth. The Admiral stands stoically in the lobby of the courthouse. She taps her foot up and down impatiently, her eyes locked on the clock, counting down the seconds for the trial to continue. I thought we'd find you here, Admiral. Zion grins, waving at her. She glances in your direction, lowering her head and narrowing her eyes. I can only hope that you're here to resume the trial, Grand Judge. We've been waiting long enough. Actually, I've got some questions for you about the incident. You point to her. After all, I, I doubt I'd be able to make a substantial argument against you if I don't have the full story, right? <sighs> I suppose you're right. So you're here to collect my witness statement on the house fire? Sure. I found out from your lieutenant that the fire happened the same day that you f arrested Alice. Is that right? Correct. She clasped her hands behind her back. And you arrested her because she burned down all those training dummies? Among other things, as I'm sure you heard in her, the courtroom, her list of offenses is far from short. Right, right. But the training dummies was the main thing. It was the tipping point. After the destruction of property, if city property, I decided that enough was enough, and she deserved to rot behind bars for her transgressions. Was there anything else that happened that day before the fire? Plenty, but nothing I would deem relevant, the Admiral explains. My duties continued as they would any other day. After I locked up that criminal for her various felonies, I returned to my post and continued my rounds for the day. Her gaze drifts as she looks down at the ground, her mind wandering back to that day. That was when I heard reports of smoke rising up from the residential area in Carpera. I rushed to the scene, only to see my own home was up in flames. It was late, so there weren't many other citizens present beside myself and a couple of guards who were working to put out the fire. So what do you think of Alice? I had enough run-ins with Alice that I was fully aware of her capabilities. She possesses a strange magic which allows her to set fire to her own limbs, the Admiral explains. When I saw the flames, my first thought was her. I wanted to check on her cell to verify she was still there, and lo and behold, she was gone. And she left something behind. Oh? Zion raises an eyebrow. The Admiral grits her teeth. I was infuriated when I saw it, so I pursued her. I followed her tracks and ran as fast as I could to catch her. But it was too late. Too late. And your eyes half close as the Admiral continues her tale. A ticking clock in the background echoes in your ears as your brain starts to tune out the spoken words and your thoughts wander once more. Yikes. Hmm. The Admiral stumbles onto the scene with wide eyes. A number of guards surround the home, doing their best to use buckets of water to put out the flames, while a couple of stray citizens stand clear with their hands over their noses to keep from inhaling the smoke. What? The Admiral barks as she quickly approaches one of the guards, placing a hand on their shoulder. Hey, what's going on here? Admiral! The guard respectfully salutes her. The fire broke out approximately 15 minutes ago. It was reported to the nearest guard by one of the neighbors. We're doing our best to quell the flames and keep this situation contained. She gulps. I knew for certain the fireplace was inactive when I left the house earlier today. And the same goes for the stove. Do you have any idea how this might have started? So far we haven't found anything that indicates this fire was set from the inside. In fact, the interior appears to be most unharmed, especially the furniture that lies farthest from the walls. The evidence suggests that it was started from the outside, but we haven't found any signs of foul play quite yet. The neighbors didn't see anything suspicious either. The Admiral narrows her eyes. Perhaps because the perpetrator used magic to start the fire? She makes a realization, turning back to the guard. The criminal I arrested today, I need someone to check on her cell immediately! The girl? The guard asks. We had a similar thought. After her display, the fire uh, power, power earlier, we couldn't find her in your cell. We assumed that you hadn't finished processing her arrest yet. The Admiral goes pale. What? All we found in the cell was this. The guard hands a slip of paper to the Admiral. She takes it into her hands, reading over the words carefully. Her face turns visibly red as her hands start to shake. That 
treacherous little- She almost snaps. Where did she go? We're not sure, Admiral. The guard steps back in alarm. She did this. I know it. I'll find her and bring her to justice once and for all. The Admiral immediately begins to run through the city in search of Alice. <sighs> Dang, she's fast. The Admiral rushes through Carpera, gritting her teeth. A cool ocean breeze blows by her, rustling the paper grip tightly in her fist. T How dare she! The woman curses under her breath, unraveling the paper to glare at the words. The handwriting on the paper is messy and wobbly, as if an uneven hand wrote it. However, the calligraphy is clear, and the words read, Better luck next time, you dummy! Next to the words is a... face with as well as a small doodle of a pirate ship. She has to be sound here somewhere, the Admiral mutters, looking around frantically. She rushes toward the ledge, which oversees the docks. Eventually, her eyes widen, and she spots a vibrant orange glow rushing down the wooden walkway. There! She shouts, vaulting over the edge. You're not getting away, Alice, you hear me! You'll pay for burning my house down! Yeah, slow down! The Admiral pushes her way through the crowds in pursuit of Ellis, who stumbles through the stalls and crowds herself, gunning it for a small boat parked on the beaches of the city. She skids in the sand, hopping into the boat as a couple of familiar sirens start to row the boat off the coast, towards Wren's ship in the distance. She rotten criminal! The Admiral shouts after her, stomping as she watches the boat sail into the horizon. I swear, I won't forget this! She looks back down toward the calling card in her grip, ripping it to shreds and watching it wash away in the ocean waves. Her hands tremble in rage, and her shoulders are tense. But eventually, she takes a moment to inhale and exhale calmly. <sighs> she focuses her gaze on the waves, watching the small boat make contact with the siren ship. The Admiral massages her temples. That's the full story as far as I know it. Obviously, I can conclude that Alice was the reason behind my home's destruction. That's why the guards never found any signs of foul play. Her magic created the fire instantly, and didn't leave behind a trace. Additionally, she left behind a calling card to boast about her success, directly slandering me with her ridiculous little symbols and pictures. I should have expected that she would escape with pirates, she behaved exactly like one, thinking she was above rules and consequences. Mm. Did I answer your questions to your satisfaction? Yeah, just have one more. You clear your throat. <clears throat> I want to look at the side of the fire myself. Do you know where it is? She blinks in surprise. I'm not sure how you'll manage that. She crosses her arms. It's been years since the fire. My house has been rebuilt since then and fortified to prevent any further attacks against me. So if we went there, there probably wouldn't be anything new. My guards know how to do their jobs. If there was something to find, they would have found it while the fire was still raging, or even days after we conducted our own separate investigation of the site ourselves. The Admiral shakes her head. There's nothing else to find there. But if you're so keen on looking around for yourself... My home is located in the southeastern corner of Carpera Docks. Okay. Thanks, Admiral. I will notice if anything's been changed, Rex. She glares at you. Just because you're working with the Grand Judge now doesn't mean you're above consequence if you damage a single thing near my home. This is your only warning. Ha! Huh, noted. You give her a weak thumbs up, sweating. We won't touch anything, I swear. You gulp, turning away, whispering to Zion. I don't believe there ever was a time she wasn't so strict. Tell me about it. <laughs> Let's go check out the crime scene. 
if I'm lucky, I can sense something weird. Me heading back onto the docks? I guess that makes sense, yeah. Admiral lives on the docks. I wish Ellis won't talk to me. And if I pry again, she's just gonna shut me out again. Guess she charged around that way. Hi there. There's a dog. He's a little bit of an old guy. Hi there, pup. You're so sweet. Oh, he's licking my fingers. What a good dog. Oh, he wants to come with. <laughs> That's her house. It's rebuilt. And the foliage has even grown back. Hey there, puppy. <sighs> you walk around the Admiral's home, a pit forming in your stomach. The house is entirely rebuilt with not a hint of damage. If you didn't know it was burnt beforehand, you'd have no idea if it was ever the victim of malicious arson. The old dog from before follows you in Zion as you investigate, its tail wagging behind it and its tongue licking at your fingers when you come to a complete stop. Zion yawns, looking up at the home. Sense anything, Rex? No. Nothing. You kneel down. Groaning. Ugh, I just don't know what to do anymore. I feel like everyone we talk to is set on Ellis being guilty. Yeah, it doesn't look great, Zion says in a straightforward manner, looking down at you. As far as I can tell, Ellis has the means, motive, and opportunity to burn down the Admiral's house. Her magic gave her the power to set the place on fire without leaving a trace. We've gotten testimonies that prove her feud with the Admiral leading up to her first arrest. And then, there's the note she left, proving that she managed to escape her cell far before the Admiral gave chase. Yep. Everything's pointed towards her doing this out of spite. Your jaw tightens. A dog nudges your arms, and you mindlessly scratch behind its ears, looking it in the eyes. Heck, I can't even deny that it sounds like something Ellis would do, and I'm supposed to be your defense! Only proof I have of her innocence is that she told me she didn't do it. Zion stares at you. Hey, come on, he frowns. Don't just sit there all depressed and sad. You're the fixer of heroin. You can't just give up so easily. I'm not giving up. Just lost. I'm out of my depth in this case. Maybe you could ask the neighbors if they saw anything, Zion suggests. You shake your head. Oh, it's no use. I didn't see anything suspicious when the fire started. The guard said that himself. What guard? Zion blinks confusion. Uh, not sure. I just remember someone saying it. Huh. I guess I'll take your word for it. He places his hands oh. behind his head. It's a moment of awkward silence before Zion clears his throat and speaks once more. <clears throat> Say, Rex, could I ask you something? Hmm? Why are you working so hard to clear her name in the first place? He asks. You just admitted that all the evidence points to Alice being guilty, but you're adamant that it wasn't her. How are you so sure? I told you. She said she didn't do it. And... You trust her. Yeah. You nod. The old dog crawls into your lap as you extend your legs, letting it lay across your legs. Lap. Then she must have never lied to you before, right? Well, oh, okay. He hesitates. In that case, 
Surely she stuck her neck out for you to earn this level of loyalty? Well... Rex, Zion frowns at you. What? What else am I supposed to do? Give up on her? You exclaim. Alice is my friend, and I owe her this favor, at least. But... Why? Because I'm a guy of my word. No favor's worth this much effort, Zion states. You just admitted that she doesn't stick her neck out for you, and yet you're working your butt off trying to repay something. She must have done you one heck of a favor in return. It's not just that. You pause, looking down at the dog and avoiding his gaze. Sure, I owe us a lot. But I work this hard to repay her, because I care about her. Why? Zion pushes you for an answer. Because she took a chance on me when no one else did. She's been my side since the beginning, you explain. She never gave up on me, so I'm not going to give up on her until I can pay things forward. Don't you think you've done enough to pay her back? <laughs> you've already put in this much effort. No, you answer immediately. It doesn't matter how much I do. There is nothing that I could do that could ever pay her back fully. But I can try. I owe her for helping me make friends, for helping me survive in the city, for saving my life countless times. And because of all of that and what she's given me, there's not a thing I could do that could ever pay her back. The most I can do is everything I can. Suddenly, you pause, several images flashing through your mind. You glance down at the dog in surprise. Huh? All right, then. Zion puts his hands up, not noticing your reaction. Not trying to break your conviction or anything. I was just curious. <sighs> In that case, why don't we try investigating a different avenue? We are almost out of time before the trial continues, but you probably have enough time to interrogate one more person. I got it. Eh? I figured it out! I know who burned the Admiral's house down! You stand up quickly. The dog barks at your sudden movement. Oh, sorry, pup. What? Well, hang on. Zion shakes his head. What do you mean, you figured it out? I solved the case! You continue to say. Come on! We gotta get back to the courthouse. I'm about to knock everyone's socks off! But how did you figure it out? Come on, Rex! Spill the beans! Come on! No time to waste! Thanks, puppy! I'll bring you food later! Come on! No time to waste! Oh, Alice, just wait till you hear this. Hmm. It's that and this, and then I should say. Yeah. Okay. You got this. You enter the courtroom confidently. Alice sits in a chair, staring at the ground with a downtrodden expression. Zion walks over to the bench falling backward into his own chair and slouching into the cushions. The Admiral stands at attention on the opposing side as you and Ellis, holding her head high. All right, then. Zion clears his throat before slapping his hand against the table. Let's call this courtroom back in session. I believe the defense has something to say. That I do, Your Honor. I mean, Grand Judge! You step forward dramatically, motioning to Ellis. Throughout today, Grand Judge, we learned of the trials and tribulations that my client had to endure during her time in Arrowwin. Ellis raises an eyebrow. You what? We learned of her struggles on the streets, her efforts to survive, and her difficulties to abide by the rules. You continue, ignoring her. All this is to say, my client has not had an easy time of things. Hey, watch it, moron. Ellis glares at you. What the heck did you learn, huh? Who did you talk to? Stop sounding threatening. I'm trying to save you from jail. You keep talking. You see, she was just trying to survive in this cold, cruel world. And yet, fate dealt her the unluckiest hand. She had to fight and steal to live. So much so that it became a habit. And then, given her conflicts with the law, she was found guilty of malicious arson after the Admiral's home was burnt down intentionally. You bring your hand to your chin. However, what if I were to tell you that it was not Ellis who did the burning, but another party altogether? 
And who could that party possibly be? The Admiral narrows her eyes. I'm glad you asked, Admiral! Grand Judge, is my client the worst? Yes. Did she steal stuff? Yes. Did she beat people up? Also, yes. How are you helping me here? But she did not burn down the Admiral's house. No! That was none other than Ren, the Pirate Queen of the Seas! What? The Admiral and Alice exclaimed simultaneously. That's right! Ren was behind it all along! Who is this Ren? Zion asks. And what does she have to do with the case? How, how do you know that she's the culprit? I'm curious myself, the Admiral mutters, although her tone is more curious than you, about your argument rather than rejecting the idea. You close your eyes, envisioning the scene once more as you saw it. You open your mouth, inhaling, as you begin to narrate the details to the audience before you. Night is cold, with a couple of strong winds rushing by from the distant ocean. The neighborhood's quiet, with hardly any citizens passing by the home. The home itself is dark inside. It's clear that no one is inside. A couple of windows from the other houses glow with golden candlelight. A young dog sits casually beside one of the houses, licking its paws and eating from a ceramic bowl. However, some quiet muttering and snickering breaks the silence near the home, as a young woman scurries around the back of the Admiral's house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll teach her. <laughs> a glint of light green streaks the darkness as a match is lit, illuminating a side of the home. Ren stares into the flame, lifting her head at the match in interest. Ren kneels down next to the house, her eye looking past the match and flame to instead focus on a couple of pieces of kindling. Some straw has been collected near some dry sticks and leaves, which are propped up against the side wall of the home. Rejecting my offer. <laughs> Who does she think she is? Ren mumbles with slurred speech as she rolls her eyes. Whatever. She wouldn't know a good offer if it <laughs> slapped her across the face. She pushes the fire end of the match against the dry twigs and straw, watching it light and blaze. Now she's bound to take me seriously. <laughs> Ren huffs, extinguishing the match with the index finger and her thumb before shucking the match into the forest. Oh, and didn't she just arrest a mage or something? <laughs> Why don't I pay that mage? A visit before I go. <laughs> Rose is gonna cackle when she hears about all this. <laughs> Ren shifts her eyes around the area, ducking into the darkness of the adjacent forest and vanishing from sight. You blink back into reality, looking up at Zion, who stares at you in surprise. So it wasn't Ellis who burned the Admiral's house down, but some pirate captain named Wren? That's right, Grand Judge. Wren was a real perpetrator. Ellis was just implicated due to circumstance. The Admiral tenses up, looking at the ground. She tucks her hair behind her ear, speaking through gritted teeth. Wren? <laughs> she looks toward Rex, crossing her arms. That argument has got to be the most rational thing I've heard all day. What? It makes total sense, the Admiral sighs, shaking her head and rubbing the ridge of her nose. Of course, Ren would act so unreasonably after our last encounter. You know about this pirate captain, Admiral? Zion asks, leaning forward. Man, do I love a good plot twist. Wait, hang on, I think I need more of an explanation. The Admiral groans. Oh, unfortunately, I am aware of Ren. You could say that we have history. <clears throat> she steps forward, clasping her hands behind her back. All those years ago, when I first arrested Alice, I'll admit that my patience was tested by her constant undermining of my authority. However, a certain intervention by a rowdy pirate earlier that day didn't make things any easier.
The Admiral opens the door to her home, sighing in relief as she finally has a moment to herself to unwind. She walks over to a nearby candle, withdrawing some matches from a drawer to light it, illuminating the room. However, another figure stands in the room, unbeknownst to her. The green-haired individual smirks, crossing her arms and kicking one leg over the other. Hey there, Admiral. The Admiral's eyes widen as she instantly withdraws her blade, pointing it at the intruder. However, her eyes glitter with recognition. Ren. She pauses. What the hell are you doing here? The Admiral asks, sheathing her blade to glare at the pirate captain. Here to see you, obviously. Why else? Ren asks, straightening up to look around the room. You've really upgraded, haven't you? Captain of the Aegean Vanguard. Quite the title, don't you think? Hm. Ironic, considering your distasteful stature. Ouch, Ren glowers. I'm hurt. Is that any way to treat your guest? You're hardly my guest. I didn't know you were coming. I didn't even invite you in. The Admiral steps forward to confront Ren. You know that breaking and entering is a criminal offense? Then again, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised that you've stooped so low. Again, with the insult, Ren puts her hands on her hips. Is that any way to talk to your future captain? My what? <laughs> you aren't being serious. The Admiral narrows her eyes at the pirate. Dead serious? Come on. It'll be just like old times. Don't you think you could use a break from all the rules and formalities? You've always been such a stick in the mud. Maybe I can change that. You're talking nonsense. The Admiral massages her temples. Did you really come all the way to Erwin to sneak your way into my home just to recruit me to be part of your pirate crew? So is that a yes or a no? No. The Admiral clenches her fist. I'm not interested in becoming your lackey, and you lost the right to speak to me so casually years ago. Do you have to be so boring? Ren pouts. Just think about my offer here. Go back to your felon of a boyfriend and get out of my house. The Admiral remains firm. I won't ask again. Ugh! Come on, now, Ren! Ren stares at the Admiral in offense and shock, gritting her teeth. And that explains why you're upset with Alice when she burned down all of your training dummies. You're already frustrated after Ren's confrontation that Alice's transgressions were just the nail in the coffin. I... suppose that's correct, the Admiral says. Ren was furious at me, just as I was furious at her. Honestly, I should have expected that she would find some way to spite me before she left with my newly arrested criminal in tow. She unintentionally framed Alice for a crime she committed. You consider the Admiral's tale, stumbling back to lean against the defense table. Whoa, Alice narrows her eyes at you. I get that we just had a big revelation, but you don't need to get all weak in the knees. Sorry, I was just... thinking. You straighten up. But that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that Ren was the one who committed this crime, not Ellis. She used the dry twigs from the forest around the Admiral's house to light the fire, and then tossed the match far away so that no one would find it. She was upset that the Admiral refused to join her crew and acted out of spite. Classic Ren, Ellis rolls her eyes. Ugh. I should have anticipated that, the Admiral groans. A foolish oversight on my part. I was narrow-minded with my sights set on Ellis. Instead, Ren was the mastermind behind it all. The Admiral pauses. Hang on. How did you know that she was trying to recruit me into her crew? I didn't mention that part of our argument. You fumble. D didn't you? When no one answers your questions, you clear your throat. <clears throat> I, I guess I just predicted it and filled in the blanks? After all, Ren isn't that hard to understand once you get to know her. I thought I was the one with good intuition. But I rest my case. My client is innocent. Given this new narrative you uncovered, I have to agree. The Admiral grimaces. She glances in Alice's direction. I apologize, Alice, for wrongfully accusing you. It turns out you were not quite the vile criminal I thought you were. 
I should not have arrested you and tried you for this particular crime. She rolls her eyes. Instead, it was your scumbag of a captain who deserved this treatment. Ellis pauses, blinking at her. Thank you? I mean, it's better than you getting convicted, Ellis. However, the Admiral holds up a finger to silence you both. Just know that this incident is no, in no way gives you special treatment in the future. If you commit a crime in the future, I will throw you behind bars. You already have several other charges that you have yet to answer for. Oh, right. Let's give those a look, shall we? Before we close this case for good. Or we could not. Uh, I'm good with just letting bygones be bygones instead. Zion pulls out a scroll from underneath his desk, unraveling it until the paper reaches the floor. Jeez, Ellis, how many crimes did you commit? Uh, what do we have here? Zion considers the scroll, thrashing a bunch of known criminals, armed robbery, thievery, assault and battery, destruction of property. He lifts off the charges. You want me to keep going? I think I got it. Ellis groans, hiding her face in her hands. Hmm, mm -mm -mm. what to do about this? Zion asks himself. On one hand, you've got quite the list of charges here. But on the other hand, it has been a long time since you've done any of this. Plus, you haven't been charged with anything new recently, which leads me to believe you're making a turn for the better. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I'm just as fearsome as I was before. You're trying to say I've gone soft? You know, most people stop digging holes for themselves. All right, I've made my decision. Zion claps his hands together, tossing the scroll aside. For the charge of malicious arson, you have been found not guilty, but your remaining charges require proper punishment. Therefore, I sentence you to being a good Samaritan. What? Wait, yeah, what? You perform acts of community service to make up for your crimes against the people of Erwin. Community service? No way! Put me in jail instead! That's exactly why this is the perfect punishment. <laughs> you don't want it. <laughs> Man, I'm good at my job. If I were you, I'd take this as the blessing it is, the Admiral advises. You're lucky the Grand Judge has, shown to, has chosen to be lenient. Sacks, community service ain't so bad, right? Uh, guess we'll have to help people out then. For free. You know, don't worry. I'll be with you every step of the way. We can help people together. Alice stares at you, her expression almost unreadable. What? She suddenly shakes her head. <laughs> Nothing! Sh shut up! Zion stands up. In that case, this trial is adjourned. Thank you, thank you everyone for coming and making this an entertaining afternoon, and a special thanks to our fixer for successfully representing his client against all odds. The Admiral huffs. I am serious. If either of you break a single one of Erwin's laws, I'll have you in cuffs in a heartbeat. Noted. Does that mean I can go now? Yes, you're all free to go. Oh, thank you, Unity. Thanks for humoring me, Rex. Zan pats you on the back as he passes by you. I can see why Ambi and Arden like you so much. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll see you around sometime. That's your thing. Thanks for your help, too. Ellis rolls her eyes, standing up. <sighs> I've spent all day cooped up in this courthouse. If I ever come back in here, it'll be too soon. No worries. Let's get you out of here, Ellis. <sighs> oh, the summer salts I just went through today. Here we go. Smell that? That's air. You stretch your arms over your head as you look up toward the night sky. Man, when's it get so late? You ask yourself as Ellis walks not far behind you. Were we at the docks just a couple of hours ago? I know trials took so much time. Rex. Alice approaches you, tapping you on the shoulder. Hmm? What's up? I just... She starts to speak, but she hesitates immediately, holding her tongue. I... I... She contemplates her next words. Thanks for your help. 
I guess, but I didn't need you to swoop in and save me. Yeah, sure you didn't. <laughs> That's why you were so sad on going to jail. Because you didn't need my help? I know how to fight my own battles. Her jaw tightens. I haven't needed anyone to fight them for me. Never have, and never will. <laughs> Whatever you say. You shrug your shoulders. But, you know, you always look out for yourself. One day you're not going to have anyone to keep you out of trouble. Alice pauses. What did you just say? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's okay to get some help every now and then. It doesn't make you any less of a person. It makes you human. She stares at you. Why are you doing all this for me? Because you're a great friend, Alice. And I want to be able to help you, even if you don't want to help in the first place. Her eyes widen, her cheeks flush ever so slightly. But I do- you! She turns away from you in a huff. Whatever, you big sappy moron! God, you're stupid! However, you notice her hide a smile behind her long, brunette hair. You still want to grab a bite at the seafood restaurant? At this point, I just want to crash, she sighs. This is exhausting. Yeah, easy for you to say. You weren't the one running around trying to clear your name. Watch it, she jabs at you. Took a lot of willpower not to break out of that office. It was hard work. <laughs> yeah, sure it was. <laughs> oh, come on. Where the heck are you guys? Ren! Ah! What? I told you not to disturb me, Rose. It's Ellis. What? See?